I was working straight after school in a little uh, laundry. Mm. Now, I did that until the uh, elders come round so anybody that uh, is of age could go in the army, learn to drive a bus, or learn to drive a tank. So I said, well, I can't do any, so what are you going to do with me? And they said, well, can, uh, will you be all right as a, a bus driver? I said, no. So they said, well, we'll put you collecting uh, buses, bus stages, you know, from different stages of the buses. So that's where I was. And then Jim, my husband, was in the army then, and he'd just come back from a lot of uh, travelling around in India, keeping the peace, it said. So they called him up as well and told him that he'd have to make his mind up to, to keep at this job or go in the army. So he, he stopped in the army and he was in the army all the way through. And uh, uh, yes, they, they sent word that he'd have to go in as an um, engineer. So we went in and uh, he was called up uh, and then was in the army and was collected along with a lot more poor men as prisoners of war as soon as he got to, to the other side. So when it comes through, it comes through that he was um, a prisoner of war, I didn't know what to do because we just bought a little house and I know it would have to be kept paid for. So I kept in the bus, on the buses with, for about two pound a week, I think it was. And kept my our little house to go in. All through that six, six years, it was away. So, uh, can't you sit down somewhere? You feel awful. Awesome. You're standing around. You're just like my grandson. Oh, God, he's like him. How old are you? 24. 17? 24. Oh, my God. I'm so fiddled. You are a big lad. So we'll carry on then. And all through the war time, I kept it going and kept on the buses. And then uh, I had a photograph I was going to show you and I couldn't find it. I did pick it out special. Not here. No. But anyway, You've got that bit of, of my life. Can you, um, do you have any stories of Doncaster during World War II? Excuse me? Do you have any stories of Doncaster during World War II? Did anything happen here? Anything happened. We lived, we bought a little cottage in um, the lower end of the Oh God, what's the name of the place now? Anyhow, it, was, it wasn't far, far from uh, where all the soldiers came over from America and they were, they were stationed near us. And then our lot comes and joined them, so there was a big army base there. And... Uh, Let me see. Is there anything you want to ask me? Yeah. Which I can perhaps remember straight remember. away. 
Do you remember any bombs being dropped in Doncaster? Any? Any bombs being dropped in Doncaster? Bombs? Bombs. Bombs? Bombs. I don't know what you mean. It's my accent, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Do you remember any bombs being dropped in Doncaster? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we were warned on the radio. That man, what was his name? He used to come and say, well, you'll have to be careful now because he'd be coming to see you tonight. And, of course, Peter was sitting up waiting and sitting on the stairway. And so we, we me and I went to live with his mum for weekends to keep her company. Me too, really. And she was only in a little place called Little Lane, Wigan. And I stayed with her weekends. And uh, this night a bomb fell just uh, two stairs, two doors away from us. And I was just going to bed with a little candle. I just put his mum in bed and said, Are you all right, mum? See you in the morning. Bash. All the wind had come out. I was just going upstairs when I was like this with the candle and um, rushed down to see if she was all right. She, <laughs> she said, what was that? I said, it was a bomb. He said, are you all right? I said, yeah, I'll stay with you now. And um, we found it in the morning that there were quite a few. Nobody uh, hurt. But lots of uh, buildings broken and that. So, uh, fantastic. Um, do you ask what life was like in Doncaster during the war? Yeah. What What was life like in Doncaster during the war? I'm a little bit deaf in this ear. What was What What was life like in Doncaster during the war? What was anything like? Doncaster, what was life, life like? To tell you the truth, there was no transport anywhere, so you couldn't move too far. I, ne I never did go to Lancaster till after the war. We heard about things happening there, but nothing for our little village. So, uh... But Dorothy... What was it like working on the buses? Well, you got up at five and there was um, no transport for us. So we had to walk to where the buses were. And that was a, a, an hour and a half walk from the highest part in Wigan, where we lived. And it took me about an hour to walk to, to the bus station and um, put your name down, gather your tickets, go and find your bus, another bus driver. And by that time, it was ready. It was out in the day, which we lost about, last about, well, from, I should say, six o'clock about six at night and uh, during that time we had a lot of snowstorms and in front of you when you're walking sometimes trying to avoid these big heaps of snow it would take you longer to get to work one day we'd started off and uh, I suddenly heard a shout. We were well on the way to where we were going at Horace, which is over the other side of Wigan. So I rang the bell to stop, and patter patter come down the stairs. There's a man wiping his eyes, he'd been asleep all night in the bus. So we got him out, and I said, well, you're a good way from home, you don't have to walk it now. So uh, that was another little incident. And then after all this 
snow and ice up at the really highest part of Wigan, looking down onto the seashore. You could, you could see all the uh, ships coming in and going out. It was really amazing. It really was. And of course, I was waiting for my letters from my husband all the time. And he, of course, they waited for one, for me. And uh, he came on on leave once, and he had his own radio, and he could listen in to different things from way out in the universe. And he called me one day, and he said, come here, Dolly, he said, come and listen to this. And it was a, an American big boat full of soldiers in, in the, from America, bringing them over to England. And uh, he said they were sending out an SOS. So I listened to the SOS and it sounded dreadful. It really did, because there were so many poor soldiers on that boat, you know? And that was, that was one of the things that really upset me. Um, after, after they'd done the, the stated time in England, they were sent back to America. Um, 